What's up everybody? Moving on to the next strategy for solving limits, we're going to talk about the change of variable strategy. And I'm going to illustrate this strategy through this example. Now, out of all the strategies, this is definitely the toughest one. It's the one that students have the most problems with. However, I'm going to explain it in a clear series of steps. As long as you follow the steps, you'll be fine. And after this overview video, I'm going to create a couple of more videos specific to this strategy with a bunch of more examples just to get you really comfortable with it. So let's take a look at this particular example. We got the limit as x approaches 64 of 64 minus x all over the third root of 64 minus 4. First thing you always check with limits, can you make a direct substitution? Well, if we sub in 64 for x, notice how the third root of 64 is going to be 4, and then 4 minus 4 would give us 0. So the denominator would be 0, so we can't just do that because it'll be undefined. However, how do we deal with this third root of x here? We've dealt with normal radicals before, where we would have, for example, the square root of x, and then all we have to do is rationalize it, and then we're able to solve the limits. But what do we do with this third root? Well, this is where this new change of variable strategy is going to come in. And more generally, whenever you see something like this, one of these types of radicals or one of these x values to the power of a rational exponent, you can be pretty sure you're going to be dealing with the change of variable strategy. And that's actually going to be one of the steps. You always want to take any radicals and change it into a rational exponent. Sometimes the question will give you rational exponents right away. Sometimes they'll be in radicals and you'll have to switch them into rational exponents. So whenever you see one of these in a limit, you know you're going to be using the change of variable strategy. And don't confuse these types of radicals with a normal radical because whenever you see something like the square root of x or x to the power of a half or the square root of 9 plus x, these types of radicals, these normal radicals, you use rationalization. However, sometimes you may also get limits where you have a normal radical like the square root of x, but you'll also have a radical like the third root of x or the sixth root of x. And if you have both of them, then you know you're going to be using the change of variable. But if you only have one of these types of radicals, like a normal radical, not third rooted or sixth rooted, then you know you're dealing with rationalization. So now let's get into the steps for using the change of variable strategy. So the first step is you want to take all of the radicals in the limit and transform it into a rational exponent. So we rewrote this limit, kept everything the same, but this third root of x we rewrote as x to the power of 1 over 3. Now as I've mentioned, the question could have just been given like this. Sometimes you'll be given radicals, sometimes you'll be given rational exponents straight away. But if you're given radicals, the first step is you always want to change them into a rational exponent. Second step is we're going to introduce a new variable, hence the name change of variable. So the variable that we're going to introduce is u, and we're always going to let u equal x to the power of the lowest exponent. So let's go back to our specific example. Well, here we got x to the power of 1 over 3, and here this x by itself is like to the power of 1. So which one is the lowest exponent? Well, this 1 over 3 here. So we let u equal x to the power of 1 over 3. We introduced a new variable. And after you introduce a new variable, the next step is you want to change all the other old variables in the limit, so all the old variables x, into the new variable u. So let's go back to our specific limit. Well, notice how we've already made a variable or a new variable for x to the power of 1 over 3. So this x to the power of 1 over 3 in the limit is already taken care of. But what about this x to the power of 1 and this expression as x goes to 64? We need new variables or new expressions for those as well because we can have a limit with multiple variables. We can have a limit with a variable u and a variable x. It has to be only one variable for us to solve it. So let's figure out first how we can make a substitution or an introduction of a new variable for this x to the power of 1. So to do that, let's rewrite what we have as our general 
new variable, u equals x to the power of 1 over 3. How can we take this x to the power of 1 over 3 and make it equal to x to the power of 1? Well, we can take it to the power of 3. And what we do to one side, we have to do to the other as well. And notice, x to the power of 1 over 3 times 3, you can multiply these exponents. So 3 times 1 over 3, that just gives us 1. So we would have x to the power of 1 equals u to the power of 3. And now notice how we have a new variable, u to the power of 3, or a new expression, u to the power of 3, for that expression, x to the power of 1. And now that we have that x to the power of 1 taken care of, let's take care of this last expression as x goes to 64. So as x goes to 64, we have to find an equivalent expression as u goes to a certain number. And to do that, let's introduce our new variable u here. So we let u equal x to the power of 1 over 3, which we did in step 2. So if x is approaching 64, or if x is 64, then we know that u is going to be 64 to the power of 1 over 3. And the third root of 64 is just 4. So as x approaches 64, that's equivalent to u approaching 4. And now notice how we have new expressions for all of the x variables in the original limit with new variables u. We have an expression for x to the power of 1 here, which is equal to u cubed. We have an expression for x to the power of 1 over 3, which is just u up here. And we have an expression for as x goes to 64 here, as u goes to 4. So then making those new substitutions, we get a brand new limit. The limit as u goes to 4 of 64 minus u to the power of 3 all over u minus 4. And now our fourth step is we just solve that new limit. And notice how this new limit here looks a lot nicer than this one here. There are no more rational exponents left, and we can just solve this new limit with factoring. So this limit here, the value of this limit, is equivalent to the value of this limit because we introduce that new variable and then all the other x variables, we use that new variable manipulated in a certain way to get expressions for the other x variables. And we have a brand new limit, but the value of this limit is going to equal the value of this one. So we can just sort of forget about that limit and just pretend like we got a question with this new limit here. And notice with this new limit, we can't make a substitution of 4 for that variable u because the denominator would be 0. So we have to factor the numerator. So I factored the numerator here, and that's a difference of cubes. So I use this formula here. I also put the sum of cubes formula. You may want to write these down because whenever you're dealing with the change of variable strategy, almost always you're going to have to factor either a sum or difference of cubes. Now we're trying to get rid of this u minus 4 in the denominator, and we're fairly close. We got 4 minus u in this bracket, but those two are still not equivalent. But if we take that 4 minus u and factor out a negative from it, we would end up with u minus 4. And notice now how the u minus 4s cancel out. And now we can make that direct substitution of 4 for the variable u. So inputting 4 in this bracket for the variable u, we'd have 16 plus 16 plus 16, which is 48. But there's this negative in front here, so don't forget about that. There's like a negative 1 in front. So our final answer ends up being negative 48. So that there is our final answer for the original limit that we got. So overall, it's not too bad. Just follow this series of steps for the change of variable. Make sure that you have expressions in terms of the new variable for all of the variables x. Get your new limit, and then usually your new limit, you're going to have to either factor a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes. Not always, but 90% of the time. And then once you do that, you get your final answer of negative 48. Now in the next few videos, I'm going to do a bunch of more examples for the change of variable strategy. And I'm going to follow these exact steps that we went over. But 
the limits are going to be a little different. They're going to be in different formats, so we're going to get exposed to different sort of situations. Yo, what's up, guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully, you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also, check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.